When you rent a water tube boiler, the work is just beginning when it gets on site. Today on The Boiling Point, we're going to be taking the gooseneck and axles off of this boiler. So now we'll start the unhook process. First we will start with the axle removal. We will pull the safety bars out of the axle. To remove the safety bars you'll have to also remove the lock pin that's on the end. Then you'll need to pull the air release in the back of the axle to release all the air from the airbags. This allows it to sink and also free roll. The airlines will also need to be disconnected from the back and the front of the trailer. We will now move to the gooseneck which is in front of the boiler to remove the locking bars. When disconnected from the truck, these bars don't allow the gooseneck to rock up and down. But to remove the gooseneck, we will need to have these disabled. Using the ram, we will raise the boiler. This is so we can put permanent timbers under the boiler. When placing the timbers, make sure that they are level. It is important for the boiler to be level during operation. With the trailer in the air, putting timbers toward the middle of the boiler will allow the boiler to teeter back and forth. Once the timbers are down, we will need a teeter forward to remove the axle. Dropping the front will bring up the back and it will unhook the axle set from the boiler. Using a forklift or a crane, pull the axle away from the boiler skid. If it gets stuck on the grooves, use forks to lift and move the axle away. Now we will remove the gooseneck. Using the ram, we will push the boiler up. Make sure to have timbers in the back to land on where the axle used to be. Putting timbers on the front of the boiler will keep it high enough to pull the gooseneck off the boiler. Using the ram, we will push the boiler up to remove the gooseneck. With the boiler up, we will remove the supports by sliding the handles up. Now that we have fully removed the safety bars as well as the safety pins that holds the gooseneck securely to the skid. Retract the ram to uncouple the gooseneck from the boiler frame. Once that has been disconnected, just pull the gooseneck away from the trailer. We will now hook the axle and the gooseneck together with the coupler. This allows it to be pulled away from the job site. We will first connect the coupler to the axle. Lifting the front of the axle up, block it to get the correct angle to install the coupler. The coupler and the axle will need to be at opposite angles. This can be achieved by using the forks. Then safety pin the axle and the coupler together with locking pins. Block the coupler to achieve an 8 to 10 inch height. This helps when adding the gooseneck. Connect the gooseneck to the coupler by guiding it in with the truck and then raise the ram once it's lined up to the coupler. Once it's lined up, install the safety pins. Drop down the supports and install the safety bars. Finally, connect the air and light cords. Make sure that they are secure so they do not drag on the ground. At this point, the gooseneck and axle is ready for transit. We will now show you the rehooking process. To rehook the gooseneck and the axle to the boiler, we will reverse the process that we used earlier. First, we'll start by separating the gooseneck and the axle. You will need to make sure that the gooseneck and the axle are connected to the truck. You will need to remove the safety bars and locking bars on the gooseneck. Without removing these, it would not be able to disconnect from the coupler. Putting down timbers under the coupler allows it to disconnect from the gooseneck. The final steps are to lift supports and secure any cables that have been disconnected. 
Lowering the ram disconnects the gooseneck and you are free to drive off. Now we will connect the gooseneck back to the boiler. With the gooseneck attached to the truck, line it up with the boiler and then back it into the connectors. Once in, use a block and the ram to push it up and lock it into place. Putting the locking bars into the connector allows the gooseneck and the trailer to be locked together. You want to then remove the timbers that were under the front of the boiler. This will allow the boiler to teeter forward. Now we'll connect the axle. To connect the axle, the boiler must be teetered forward. Lowering the piston in the front allows the boiler to tilt forward. Remove the timbers in the back of the boiler once it is high enough. To be able to put the axle in place, we will need to first remove the coupler. Lift the coupler up off the blocks with the forklift. You will need to remove the locking bars to keep the two pieces together. Then, just as if you were connecting them, you will need to angle both the axle and the fork on the forklifts to be sure that the hook releases from the bar. Now we will move the axle into position. When using the forklift, you will need to lift the front of the axle. Using the side shift, you can roll it on top of the boiler frame. Then, use the forks to push it the rest of the way in. Use the ram on the front of the boiler to teeter the boiler back. This will lock the axle and the boiler together. Then we will put the locking bars in. This will secure the axle to the boiler. Once that's done, reconnect the air hose and the light wire. We now need to remove the timbers from the middle. Using the ram, push the boiler up higher, and once it's at height, remove the timbers from the middle. Once that's done, lower the ram back down and reinstall the safety bars on the gooseneck. At this point, the boiler is ready to leave. There you go. Well, now you know how to unhook a gooseneck and axle on a rental boiler. Always love using that drone to give you some great shots. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to that YouTube channel. If you like our videos, please share them. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.